Hello everyone, welcome to my Facebook Live. My name is Mary Bush with Stampin' in the Sand and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And you are either catching me on my Facebook page or you're catching me on the replay posted to YouTube or my blog. So welcome. I'm calling this series the Saving Our Sanity Through Stamping series because I don't know about you, but my sanity is is uh, very quickly beginning to slip away. So please excuse my lighting again today. Um, I explained yesterday that my air conditioning went out on my second floor where my craft room is. So I had to relocate everything to my dining room. The lighting is not the same. It's not optimal. I've done the best I could. I still have shadows and no matter what I do, I can't fix it. So just bear with my lighting. All right, so today I have a unique card fold for you. At least I think it's unique. I don't know. I kind of hatched it out of my own brain, so I don't know if anyone's done it before. And um, I don't have anything new and unique here, but we shall find out soon enough, right? So right now, um, Stampin' Up! is nearing the end of Celebration. If you're not familiar with Celebration, or even if you are, just as a refresher, Celebration is the time of year when you get rewarded for your purchases through Stampin' Up! And each time your order reaches a $50 level, you can choose from some exclusive products that are only available during celebration and available only for free. You can't purchase them. You can only redeem for them. There's $50 level product and $100 level product. And tomorrow is the last day to place those qualifying orders before all of these products disappear. So we're gonna be playing with a couple of those. Hi, Linda. We're gonna be playing with a couple of those today. And then we're gonna be moving on to a new suite that's coming out on April 1st. So today I'm bidding farewell to Celebration, but I'm also welcoming our new suite. And that will be available for purchase come April 1st. However, if you are interested in joining Stampin' Up! either as a business demonstrator or as a discount demonstrator, you can add the new products to your starter kit between now and April 1st. So basically today and tomorrow. And after that, um, you'll still be able to add them to your starter kit. It'll just be at the same time as everyone else can buy them. So that just kind of is celebration in a nutshell. So if you're interested in seeing what the items are that are available for free, you can hop on over to my website, stampinandthesand.stampinup.net, and all of that is listed under the celebration tab. I also published a new Hostess Club code today, ordering code. Uh, that's available on my Stampin' in the Sand at blogspot.com blog. And also I can uh, publish that here as soon as we're done this live video. But my Hostess Club is a unique way to Acquire the items that are on your wish list while staying within a budget. There's a minimum $35 purchase per month. It runs for six months, and on your sixth month, you are the hostess, and you start to get your hostess rewards. You're guaranteed a minimum in $25 in free products, so that's actually higher than um, your six-month quota added up. And then if you were to look at the rewards tab for hosting an event, you actually are getting more product for free from being in the club than you would be if you were placing that order as one bulk order or as part of another um, incentive. So that's Hostess Club. I have the information on the club is available on my blog. It's also available through my website or you can contact me directly and um, we have new membership starting now for April. So that's my hostess club. Next, we have co coordination product release. These are some exclusive dies and designer series paper. We actually used this 
These does punch designer series paper in our class yesterday as well as some previous classes. So if you're if you're new to my channel, you can just kind of flip through my videos. And if you're new to my Facebook page, you can find all of those videos and projects here on my page as well. So the coordination product release, that was released at the beginning of February. Like I said, it's exclusive dies and a, and a designer series paper pack that was released to coordinate with celebration product and current mini catalog product. However, despite the fact that the mini catalog will continue past celebration, these coordination products will not. So your nature's thoughts dies, your special days dies, the ladybug dies, sending flowers dies, the birthday dies, which I believe are sold out already, and the please does punch 12 by 12 designer series paper, those all end tomorrow. So if you're looking to purchase any of those coordination products, you'll need to do that by midnight tomorrow, or they will be gone. And I just today convinced myself I had to have the Nature's Thoughts stamp set and bundle, um, stamp set and dies to create my own bundle. So I'm going to be placing my order in the next 24 hours or I'll be out of luck. Okay. Um, this is just more celebra celebration product. Some of our annual pro annual catalog product was added to the celebration mix. So you have your red rhinestone jewels, your mini shipping boxes, the follow your art designer series paper, the dino roar designer series paper. I did a whole series of classes uh, based on the dinosaur suite. So you can check those out if you're looking for some ideas for your free dino roar designer series paper. We also have our woven threads paper, shimmer detailed laser cut specialty paper, some Rococo rose blends, a butterfly duet punch, and the wild rose dies. Those are those two items are at the hundred dollar tier, and we use the wild rose dies yesterday in class so you can rewind and check that out if you want to see those in action so today we're going to start out um, with our country club suite now this suite contains the country club designer series paper and the clubhouse bundle which is a stamp set and die set that coordinates uh, re around the sport of golf Country Club Twine, the Country Club Elements, and some absolutely Argyle embossing folders. Now, we are not using the Clubhouse Bundle today. We are only going to be using the Designer Series Paper. I actually do not own the Clubhouse Bundle. Gasp. I don't. I used to live on a golf course. I do not live on a golf course anymore. I'm betting by the end of the catalog I will own it. <laughs> the clubhouse bundle i just have not yet i kind of ordered some other stuff in priority ahead of it but if you are interested and you have golfers in your friends and family this is your clubhouse stamp set and these are your dies so there's even a little golf ball there's your clubs some banners for your sentiments some tufts of grass it is a really cute set there's a little golf tee um I just don't have it yet, so we can't use it. But we are going to use the Country Club Designer Series paper because it has golf um, emblem, emblems and motif on one side, but then it's got some really nice plaids and argyles on the other side. So we can play with that today. So that's in the mini catalog. And these are the papers. So if you haven't seen them yet, we have these nice, bright, colorful prints. And on the back side, we have our golf motif. So we have some here that are just a black and classic black and white design, but you can color them with markers. You can color them with blends, watercolor pencil, watercolor pencils. Um, you name it. Any any way you want to color it, you can color it, or you can just leave it black and white. So that's that sheet. This is a really nice green, uh, what is that, a tartan? And on the other side, we have our cute little golf carts. 
that would even be cute for some of our camp camping and um, community cards because down here, I don't know about the rest of the country, but down here, people drive golf carts on the road. They can be street legal within so many miles of your house. It's crazy. You're driving down the road behind a golf cart. It's nuts. They drive around my neighborhood in golf carts. Then we have this gray print here. On the back, we have our bold golf emblems. And then we have some blues. And on the back side of that, we have our tees and balls and our flags. And I used to golf, but I haven't picked up a club in so long, I'd probably miss the ball. I did enough of that when I was trying to play golf. All right. So today's card actually was designed in my brain. And the funny story is that I saw a card and I absolutely loved it. I loved the layout. I loved the designer series paper they used. I loved everything about the card. And then I couldn't find it again. I looked through my photos. I looked through my pins on Pinterest. I looked through my saved posts on Facebook. I couldn't find it. it I was driving myself literally mad. So I decided I would recreate it the best I could from what I remembered it in my head. So I designed a card. And then I found the card that I was looking for right in front of me on my phone and it looked absolutely nothing like what I created. So today we are going to create what came out of my head <laughs> and it's absolutely nothing like the original. But we're gonna play with it anyway because it's kind of fun, I think. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of design of uh, cardstock and I cut it eight and a half by five and a half. And I have my little cheat sheet here. I actually started a book on my card designs. So I have, I want to get this in the screen here. We have a piece of cardstock. It's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Then I removed one inch from each side of the front flap. All right, so this is your front and this is your inside. Simple enough, right? Then we're gonna cut our designer series paper. So I have two strips that are one inch by four inch, one strip that's three and a quarter by four, and then I have my other strip here that's the one by four. So you're gonna adhere one there, one there, and one in the middle. And after I hacked up a whole entire piece of this designer series paper, I realized that the way you cut your pattern does matter because you want them all to match. You want them to look like one continuous piece. So, I'm looking for a pen. And of course, I can't find a pen. Why would I be able to find a pen when I want a pen? So, forget it. We're just going to move on. So, I'm just going to use liquid glue. And I'm going to adhere my designer series paper to my cardstock with my glue. Because you know right now I'm all about trying to make my cards not quite as bulky so that I can just slap on a stamp and put it in the mail and not have to go out in public to go to the post office. This is day 15 that I have not left my property. I have not gone to the store. I have not gone to the post office. I have not gone for a walk at the public park. I have not done anything. And to say it's getting old, this is crooked, is an understatement. And my husband is in Massachusetts and we don't know when we're gonna see each other again. We have no idea when he's going to be able to come home. And that has me really kind of uh, upset. So, 
this card, and I don't think he's watching because I'm not really sure that, because I think he's at, he's gone to his son's. I don't think he's gonna see this video. But Roger, if you're on here, shut me off because I don't want you to see my card. Go away. So this card is for my husband. Yeah, we're, Wendy, we're gonna, we do some FaceTiming. He FaceTimed me when he was um, at his son's. And I got to talk to the grandkids. They pass me around and, ah, oh, me, I'm making a mess. They pass me around and then they get tired of talking to Grammy and just kind of put me down on a table <laughs> and leave me there. <laughs> so I can kind of be in the room, but they don't have to actually talk to me. It's kind of funny. It's just like I was sitting there on the couch. Okay, so there you go. See, it's all matchy. I just feel, I feel like this one's a little crooked, but it could be my flap isn't folding 100%. Okay, so there's that. Now we're gonna do some stamping. So I've used these nested, stitch nested, what are these? Labels dies. I love these. At first I found them a little intimidating because of the shape. But the more I use them, the more I like them. So I've used the second largest for my Whisper White piece. And I used the largest to cut a piece of Knight of Navy to match my, car my uh, card stock on my card base. And we're going to take our white panel here and do some stamping. So I'm going to use, I probably should put the cap on my glue because that's a crisis waiting to happen, isn't it? <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to use my glue. I mean, put my glue away and use my Whisper White piece here. We, I don't think we need my notes anymore either. So we can put that aside. So I'm going to bring in the Puppy Parade, Knight of Navy, Crushed Curry, and Garden Green. And I know they're going to coordinate with my designer series paper because on the back of the pack... It says so. It says Country Club Designer Series Paper, Basic Black, Crush Curry, Garden Green, Knight of Navy, Poppy Parade, and Whisper White. And what's important about our Designer Series Paper, if you're a scrapbooker, is that it's acid-free and lignin-free. Those are some key words for scrapbookers. Okay, then I'm going to use, <clears throat> from the stamp set, I've got my watch image and I guess I should tell you what stamp set we're using that'd be good right so we're going to use the well-dressed stamp set this is a celebration item so you can get this item for free with a $50 order we're also going to be using the tags and bloom stamp set this is another celebration freebie that you can earn with a qualifying order I believe this one though is a hundred dollar level but I'll check that in a moment, because I put that information aside. And we're also going to use Seriously the Best, which is in our annual, no, it's not, is it in our annual catalog? It's either in the annual catalog or the, or the mini catalog. I'm drawing a blank now. I think it's in the annual catalog. Should have put a post-it note on that. So from Well Dressed, I'm going to play with this watch here. All right, so we got the watch image. That's on my block. And I'm going to start with crushed curry. And I probably should move this aside before something happens to it. Remind me where I put it. So I've got my watch. And I'm gonna start with that over here. And I wanna make sure the buckle is up. And I can't see, oh my gosh. I'm a fish out of water without my craft room, I'll tell you. Funny how you get accustomed to stamping in the same place. And I'm going to clean it off with my chamois. Then I'm going to move to the poppy parade.
and I'm going to stamp the watch again. Clean it off. And then the next color is going to be garden green. And I'm just waiting to make a mistake. <laughs> I did that too low. That's all right, nobody's gonna know. All right, garden green, clean it off. Back to the yellow. did that I did that red one way too low well, that's all right the only one that's gonna know is me and once I mail my husband his card I won't remember and I'm gonna come down with my poppy parade clean that off again and back to the green. And now I'm too tight over to this side. Nobody's going to know. And I did the same thing I did on the first card and didn't get a good stamp at the bottom of the wristband. I did the same exact thing in the same exact spot on the other card, on my sample card. Oh well, at least I'm consistent. All right, we're gonna get these out of the way because we're all done with those. We're gonna bring our card back in. This is going to get adhered to the front. And I'm just gonna, whoops, quick use some adhesive runner. I also have to order adhesive. I'm running dangerously low. All this um, social distancing and stamping. I'm burning through Whisper White cardstock and adhesive like crazy. Okay, so now we're going to, I'm going to pop this up on the front of the card just to give it a little something extra. I don't think one little layer of dimensionals is going to require a ton of extra postage or needing to be weighed. And then this is going to get lined up on the front. I really don't, I'm not really crazy about how I did my watches with this one. But it's too late now. And I want that fairly centered at least side to side. So that's crooked. It's gonna come up just a little. Okay. Then I need some scrap whisper white and the Knight of Navy because we need to tie that into our card. And from the seriously the best stamp set, I want the I miss you a lot. So I've got that on a block. This is one of our cling stamps. So I've got, I miss you a lot. I'm just gonna stamp that on my scrap. Whoops. Get that ink pad out of the way. Then I'm gonna come in with my classic label punch. This is in the annual catalog. And punch that out. Then I have my dimensionals. I just need to take a few dimensionals off of the side there. And I just want them to go under the I miss you a lot. Onto the, I mean, onto the uh, left edge. Yeah. You know what I mean. Do what I do, not as I say, right? Is that how the saying goes? And then I can just use this to cover up the bottom of that wristband. 
where I goofed, where luckily I goofed on the very first card. And then I want my catalog. Where'd my catalog go? I'm telling you, I throw everything around. So you can see there's in the Country Club Twine Pack, there's these colors that coordinate. I'm gonna use the Knight of Navy twine. So we've got some Knight of Navy. And I'm gonna do, I got the tape from the twine stuck to my finger. I'm gonna take a good length of it because I wanna do a double bow. So there's a fine line between too much and not enough. That is not tied in the right direction. Got too much at one end and not enough at the other. All right. Trying to figure out how this bow is going. Have you ever done that? You can tie a perfect bow when you're by yourself, but you try to do it in front of anybody and forget it. <laughs> It's just not going to happen. Welcome to my world. All right, that's good enough. That's good enough. I'm sure my husband's not going to be critiquing my bow tying skills. He probably won't even notice there's a bow on it at all. All right. Okay. So now I've got my bow. Somewhere around here, I had a box of glue dots. So you just need a couple of glue dots. All right. I don't see his name scrolling by, so I hope he's not watching. So if you are, Roger, go away. All right. And I'm just going to put that, I guess, there. All right, so now we need to do the inside of the card. And is this my piece? This is not my piece, so we need to trim this down. Don't forget, if you join my Stampin' Family and then before tomorrow at midnight, you can get one of these free little cutters. We do not lie when we tell you this cutter is amazing. This thing lives on my table. All right, so this is three by four. And that's gonna go right here in the middle. But we need to do some stamping. So I'm gonna bring back my watch. And I'm going to bring back, bring ba -ba back, yeah, bring back my poppy parade. And you could use whatever color you wanted. I'm just using Poppy Parade. And first, though, I should stamp my greeting. So let me move that out of the way because I don't know where this is going to exactly end up. So let's not get ahead of ourselves and stamp the watch first. So I've got the Knight of Navy again. Just to tie this all together, I miss your face. And I'm going to stamp that on the inside of my card. Hope it's straight. Of course, he probably wouldn't notice. My mother would though. My mother would always notice if anything was crooked on my cards. I swear I got it from her. I swear I'm anal because of my mother. She passed it on to me. All right, and then I'm gonna stamp my watch where I just touched the cardstock by accident and got a mark on there. Did you see that? <laughs> I did. I was hovering and I hovered too low and I stuck the stamp to the paper, made a mark. All right, I need my adhesive again. All right, one little strip of adhesive there. Get this lined up in the middle. This one is crooked, darn it. That's all right, he won't notice. 
I'll tell him to tilt his head and he won't notice. Okay, so what do you think? What do you think? I miss you a lot. I miss your face. Perfect for today's times, isn't it? And then this is the one that I created ahead of time. So the only thing I did different here that I thought I didn't want to do this time was these bands are higher and I actually think I like it better. I think I like it better with them going off a little bit. So there's that one, but don't go away because we have another one. Don't think that's all there is because there's not. We're going to do two. Okay. So this is the one that you can make now with current product that we have available. And now we're going to make another version using that new ornate garden suite. So if you remember yesterday, we played with that card here in my class, but I didn't have the whole collection, so I couldn't show you everything that was in it. So for starters, just as a recap, where did I put everything? This is the stuff for our card. We have the Ornate Thanks stamp set with that great font for our thank you, so grateful, and thanks. And then we have all this wonderful script to go along with it. Yes, Cindy, but wait, there's more. Don't go away. This is the Ornate Style stamp set with the floral images that coordinate with the Designer Series paper. Our Designer Series paper is absolutely gorgeous. So we have these flowers, and then on the back, we have our tone on tone green. We used some of these prints in our class. Then we have this, I believe is Flirty Flamingo. Let me see what it says on the pack. It says, a new color, soon to be released. It's a sneak peek called Bumblebee. So apparently Bumblebee is going to be one of our new in colors in the next annual catalog. So we have Bumblebee, Early Espresso, Mint Macaron, Old Olive, Terracotta Tile, and Whisper White. So I'm thinking there's supposed to be some Terracotta Tile in here, but I will bet you anything that goes with Flirty Flamingo. And it does, flirty flamingo. Interesting. Ugh, totally not Calypso Coral though. So I just think it's interesting how different shades of what they're saying is terracotta tile actually will coordinate with other colors in our collections. Okay, moving on. Um, we have this lovely daisy pattern that would coordinate very nicely with our Daisy Punch. I've got some projects coming up with that pairing. Then we have this print here. On the back of this one, we have this pattern that we used in class with that beautiful gold inlay. Then we have some gold and Whisper White with the flowers. So these can be colored, they can be with markers, they can be colored with watercolor, they can be colored with um, blender pens or the Stampin' Blends, get the words out, Mary, or Brayered. There's a lot of different ways that you could color the images here or you could just leave them plain. On the back of this is this pretty little subtle pattern that reminds me of old fashioned wallpaper. Then we have our little cluster of flowers here. That actually reminds me a little bit of a phlox garden. I used to have a phlox garden. I, I should plant phlox here, but I digress. Then we have this mint macaron and gold pattern. I don't know if you can see it really well with, the, um, with my lighting. And then we have this pattern here, which is again the whisper white with the gold, and the gold debossed because it's not raised. It's actually... Um, debossed into the paper gold and white and these flowers are smaller than the images in the designer series paper i showed you prior and then on the back we have our daisies again in all sorts of different colors including what i'm assuming is bumblebee 
bumblebee, which looks like a nice orange, orange gold uh, yellow. That looks really, I bet it's this one right there. That's really pretty. Okay, then, because that's not all, we also are coming out with our ornate layers dies. We played with those yesterday in class. And that's this big collection of dies here. Yesterday, I showed you how to take your larger die cut layers and make them shorter. So today, we're actually going to use a full-size piece. Last night, we cut it down shorter for using on our card. So if you miss that, you can watch the replay on how to do that. And I just put the wrong piece back in the pile. That would have come back to bite me. Okay. The or so these dies, this mess right here, because I'm afraid to go to Home Depot and buy myself some magnet sheets. So I'm just going to have a mess until this plague is over, if it ever ends. These are what it cuts out. So this one will cut out this piece here, which I'm actually struggling with because it's almost too big. So I'm actually playing with cutting this one down too. So we have that one. The next layer is this one here, and that's this one. And actually, I should bring in my navy so you can see that at the bottom. Okay, so there's that. Then your next layer is that one. Then we have, I seem to be missing one. Oh, then we have this piece here. This one right here cuts this outline here, but the middle would be solid. But what I did is I took this, ah, this piece here. Oh, they're going everywhere. I need a magnet. This piece here, and I did an inlay. So that's what this one does, is it does that inlay. So that's that one. Then, moving on, this big one right here cuts this. And we're going to use this in class today, this panel. So there's that one. Then this right here is what we used in class yesterday and we're using again today. That cuts this piece. Then we move to this stitched piece, which we're going to use in class today and used yesterday. So that cuts this. And it actually, if you um, happen to miss class yesterday, it perfectly fits the so grateful, the thank you, and the thanks within its borders. So that big thank you is gonna fit perfectly right on this, this piece. All right. And then this is this piece right here, but I use this inlay piece to cut the detail in the middle. So there's that one. And then, I'm just going to put this aside because it's never going to go back in the container, right? Without me spending some time. Then we have our Ornate Borders dies, which is another just another die set in the collection. And again, I really need my magnets. It's going to drive me nuts not having my magnet sheets. Okay, so in this mess, we have a couple borders. So we have this border right here, which coordinates with the same kind of detail that we have on this piece. A little bit, this one and this one. It's more this one. And that's the one that I showed you, the note card yesterday that I had created where I actually used it to cut the edge of the note card, just to give it a little bit more something something. So that's one of the edges. And then the other edge is, I guess, what I'm calling the bubbles. It's like a bubble edge. And um, so that's just another edge die, okay? Then we have our 
flower. I cut a couple of these. So there's that is this one right here. Cuts that. And you can either do it as an edge or you can add this die to cut it out and make a strip. So that's what I did there. Then we have this floral image here and that's this one right here. And then we have this edge here, which coordinates with that. And that makes just an edge on your project. Then if you wanna fill in some of these flowers here from this strip, there's these little loose flowers here. Or you can scatter them on your card, put them on the inside, things of that nature, just to tie it all together. So that's those dies. Hopefully that gives you a better idea of what they do. Sorry I didn't have them for you last night. I just wasn't as organized with having to relocate so quickly. All right, so we're not using these dies because I've already pre-cut everything. Also included in the suite is the Gilded Gems. And it's funny, at first when I got these and I looked at them, I'm like, eh, yeah, whatever. I probably won't use them. They're just solid gold um, raised gems. But you know what? I've actually used a lot of them. <laughs> so, you know, beware passing judgment right away because it'll probably come back to hunt you. And we also have, as part of the suite, this gorgeous ribbon. Oh my gosh, this ribbon is absolutely beautiful. So it's terracotta tile. It's terracotta, I'm pretty sure it's terracotta tile and old olive. And it is really, really soft. It's really pliable. You can tie a really nice bow with it if you can get your thumb out of there. Ties a really nice bow if you take the time <laughs> to do it right. It's not bulky, so see you can get a nice flat bow out of it. You, it would wrap really nicely. I just love this ribbon. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, I think I covered everything that's in that suite. I am pretty sure that I did. And I will have links for you when that all becomes available, as well as the PDF, which, you know, now I can't find because I just kind of threw everything around. So again, you can order all of those products in your starter kit between now and tomorrow evening to access this product before it's available to everyone else. And if you're a demonstrator already, it's available currently for pre-order. Customers, it will be available come April 1st. All right, so for everyone else, April 1st. So let's get started on our card. So we're gonna use the same card design as we did for this card. We're just gonna use totally different products on it. So as I said already, we have our pre-die pre cut strip for our greeting. This is just some scrap paper and I fussy cut a flower and I'm gonna hope it's in this pile because otherwise I'm gonna have to fussy cut another one. Oh, nope, here it is, I found it. There's my fussy cut flower. Phew, I did not wanna have to fussy cut another flower. Then we have our background layer that's been pre-die cut in old olive. And I'm just working my pile down. Then we have another die cut layer in gold foil. I had to pre I had to order another package of that today because this sweet I'm going to use all my gold foil playing with this sweet. Then we have our two 1 inch by 4 inch strips of DSP. And then we have our 3 inch by 4 inch piece of DSP. And I've chosen the gold inlaid smaller flower pattern for this card. So now we just have to put our layers together. So we've got our DSP. Yesterday I was pouting because I was putting glue on 
the gold foiled paper today I'm pouting because I'm putting it on those beautiful flowers. Good thing it's designer series paper. I can always buy more. Actually, I think I did. <laughs> I think I did buy another pack of it. All right. So there's that. Then I have to adhere my strips to the inside. And it looks like I'm missing my interior panel for this card. I didn't cut one. That was silly. Okay. So there's the first one. Here goes the second one. Get that extra goopy of glue or I'll end up gluing my flap to the inside of the card. Okay, so now you can see how that's gonna open and close. And then we need to do some stamping and throw our layers together. This is actually super quick when all the die cutting is already done ahead of time. So I need my old olive. And I don't want to lose this flower. Don't let me forget it's up there. Because you know me, I'll forget that it's right in front of me. And I need a block. And what did I do with the other block? And then I need my other block. And I need my stamp set. <clears throat> so I'm going to use the big thank you, just like we did yesterday. And I'm also going to use the from my bottom up from the bottom of my heart. I have so many thank you cards that I need to send out to people that have been keeping me in their thoughts and prayers while my Poor hubby is so far away fighting his battles. Okay. And then as I explained yesterday with these really long greetings, because they're photopolymer, they can bend. So you could actually take this and wrap it around a circle if you wanted to, or make it into um, waves. With the photopolymers, you can bend it into pretty much any shape that you want to. I need it to go straight. So I find if I just slap them down, toss them down on my surface, they will find their, their you know, straightness. They'll find the way that they're, they're supposed to be and um, set themselves and then I can just pick them up with the blocks as long as I don't take my eye off my block and forget where I put it, which I just did. Did you see that? Say, no, we didn't see anything. Okay, so I have my thank you. And I want it down towards the bottom. So that I have room. And I think I'm too low, but that's okay. I should have put my glasses on for that one. I need room for the rest of the message up at the top. Moment of truth. Oh, it's not too low. It's fine. <sighs> Worried for nothing. All right, now I'm going to use the early espresso. And again, I'm just bringing in ink colors that were listed on the designer series paper pack because it makes it easy for me to know they're going to coordinate with each other. And if I were to swap this DSP pattern out for a different pattern in the pack, I would know that it was going to work. All right, I think I'm gonna try my glasses for this one because I am just far enough away and you don't wanna see the top of my head considering all the hair salons are closed. And I am so beyond needing a cut and a color, I cannot even begin to tell you. Perfect. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Ah, I can't believe I did that perfectly. Pat on the back. Okay, now, glasses off, we need to do our layering. So I've got my greeting. And that's just going to go, whoops, there's my glue. That's going to just get glued 
to the front. Make sure it's straight. So see how nice and neatly that fits right in there? Then this one curled a little bit when it was in my big shot. So I want to take some of that curl out. And I also see that I missed getting one of those little gold gizmos out. So I'm just going to use my scissors and poke it out. I don't see any more that I missed. Okay. Then we're going to, I'm just going to use glue on this layer. It would look really pretty with dimensionals, but again, I'm just trying to keep things less bulky and flatter. I'm sure the postal workers are stressed out enough. They don't need me going in there with a bunch of cards that need to get weighed and measured. I'm sure they'd prefer I just stick a stamp on it and send it on its way. And then, I'm trying to think what I did. I did, I think I put dimensionals on this piece. So where are they? So I'm gonna put dimensionals, but I wanna lay it this way because I don't wanna go off the front with my dimensionals. Or it'll be, it'll seal the card shut. I'll be able to open it. Okay. All right. Yes, Ellen, these dimensionals are very spectacular. I mean, dimensionals, my gosh. <laughs> these dies are spectacular. I love them. Does that look even enough? Okay, so there's that. Then my fussy cut flower that I actually remembered. And that's going to go up on a dimensional, but I need a mini. Where did I put my mini dimensionals? I had myself all organized. Here they are. All right, I can't wait to go back up into my craft room where I know where everything is. You know, it's nice to use my dining room for a change, but it's getting old and the view isn't as nice. It's got a front yard view instead of a backyard view. I like my backyard view. I mean, I like my front yard view, but don't get me wrong, but I like my backyard view better. All right, I forgot tweezers. So... I wonder if I can use my paper piercer to move this rhinestone, do you think? Without shooting it across the room or dropping it? All right, so I'm gonna just put, see how that flower has that little insert, little inside? I'm just gonna lay my rhinestone down there. And then, because you should do things in odd numbers, but not necessarily just one, I'm going to pick a couple of flowers that are on the background DSP to add these little rhinestones to. Which one do I want? This one? Or that one? That one? Maybe that one. I guess that one. All right. So there's that. And I'm just going to put this away because I'll lose that little black cap forever and then I'll be crying. And I, lo I already lost the cap to my glue. There it is. All right. So I failed to cut a piece for the inside of the card. But if you remember, we just did three inches by four inches, whisper white on the inside. And then my intention was to add some more um, fussy cut flowers on the inside on my whisper white piece that would go here but just pretend it's there because I didn't cut it <laughs> so you could do um just a couple of fussy cut flowers on the inside or you could stamp 
this little flower right here. The other thing we could do is stamp this flower here in the upper and lower corners. I always try to do um, upper right, lower left, or upper left, lower right. I always do on a diagonal. This stamp right here with um, gold heat embossing, that would also look really cool on the inside of the card with your, your note of thanks. So there is our card in the version created with Ornate Garden. And here is the card that we created using the designer series paper from the mini catalog that coordinates with the Country Club Suite. So that's this designer series paper here. We tied in the twine and we used the well, oh, that's slammed. We use the well-dressed stamp set that is part of celebration. So the celebration items that we use today are our well-dressed suite, uh, well-dressed suite, our well-dressed stamp set, blah, and our tags in bloom stamp set. So you still have 24, I don't know, 24, 30 hours to earn your free products by placing those orders of $50 or more in my online store. All the links are here for you. And it all, I also showed you our new ornate garden suite. So I hope you liked my fancy, my little fancy fold here. And um, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone do a card design like that, but that's what came out of my head. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll play with it and share with me what you create with it. And um, I guess that's it for today. And I will stamp with you again tomorrow when I have another Ornate Garden Sweet Card as well as its counterpart from Current Catalog Product. So thanks a lot. And um, Ella, oh, Ellen, you're looking for the dimensions. I will reiterate. Hold on one second. I have my little notepad. Hold on. It's in my notepad. All right. So the cardstock base is eight and a half by five and a half. You score it at four and a quarter. Then you remove one inch from each side. So it just leaves you with that. Then our DSP is one by four, one inch by four inch times two, and that's for the card base. Then it is three and a quarter by four inches for that front flap. And then you can, the insert, the whisper white insert for your message on the inside is three inches by four inches. Okay, so you can screenshot it, write it down, yada, yada, yada. There's our two different versions. And if you do play along with this, I would really love it if you would share it with me because like I said, it came out of, the design kind of came out of my head based upon something that I saw um, and couldn't find and tried to, tried to recreate it from what I remembered and I turned out being completely wrong in designing my own unique card. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will stamp with you again. Uh, same time, same channel tomorrow. Thanks guys. Happy stamping. Have a great night. Let's save our sanity through stamping. It's all we can do right now, right? All right guys. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Bye.